So today we're going to talk a little bit about Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, IBD, what could its origin be, and could it be related to something that you will not have thought about before, something you, you probably wouldn't have come across before on the internet. We're going to get right into that just after I go over a couple of things to do with IBD. So inflammation occurring in the GI tract, possibly due to excess free radical slash oxidative stress, often manifest as severe abdominal cramping, pain, bloody diarrhea, incontinence. Although its origins are unknown, it's often a condition that appears in individuals who have endured acute or long-term physical or psychological stress. And I would say some of the most commonly occurring situations I hear people get themselves in before having their first onset of IBD symptoms include things, for example, like having a very close personal trauma happening to them, going through a pregnancy, whether that be during pregnancy or post-pregnancy, immunizations or antibiotics, or also some sort of viral infection or bacterial infection. So this typically tends to be the conventional versus natural health approach when it comes to IBD. So conventional healthcare systems will prescribe anti-inflammatory and immune suppressant medication presumably to try to reduce the impact caused by inflammation. Whereas on the other hand, naturopathic healthcare practitioners tell us that the best approach is to try to eliminate inflammation through dietary changes, lifestyle changes, and also supplementation of herbs and other minerals, vitamins, and other supplements. I would say as an IBD sufferer though, that there's only two things that we should take for granted when it comes to our symptoms. And that is number one, Lots of us have got these certain markers that are completely out of whack, these immune and inflammatory markers that we'd like to bring to within a more acceptable range. And number two is the fact that we live with this set of symptoms that we'd just rather live without, these randomly occurring flare-ups that bring with them lots of unpleasant symptoms. What is it we can do about these things to try to reduce the likelihood of them actually coming about in the first place. Now one question I've been asking myself for quite some time now is that when it comes to IBD, is it worth looking further than just the gut? So you get people all the time talking about bacterial imbalances, vitamin deficiencies, insufficient stomach acid, mineral imbalances, but you see there's a lot of factors here that I see quite a few IBD sufferers believing they can have a large impact over. But I would personally argue that these are factors that are self-regulated to a large extent by our individual bodies. And actually, if we take more of a supplement or if we change our diet, or if we try to take probiotics to influence our bacterial microbiome, does it actually work for a long period of time? Does it have that longevity that actually comes with it? Or does the body revert back to what it was previously? So that brings me on to this point, which is, has anyone ever considered neurology in IBD? So this is from the book Functional Neurology for Practitioners of Manual Medicine. Various studies have shown that right hemispheric chemical dominance was associated with upregulation of the hypothalamic mediated isoprenoid pathway and was more prevalent among individuals with various metabolic and immune disorders including a high BMI, various lung diseases, increased levels of lipid peroxide products, decreased free radical scavenging enzymes, and inflammatory bowel disease. And also another thing to note is that cortisol secretion has been associated with the right hemisphere with predominance of control demonstrated in this hemisphere during emotionally related situations. So this would imply that certain areas of the brain actually have control over certain chemical releases, hormonal releases, the upregulation of the HPA axis and the stress response. And in turn, that can release hormones like cortisol and actually suppress the immune system. So this is really, really fascinating stuff to do with the brain. And I'll try my best to find some of these studies for you guys and link them down below in the description. But moving on from that point, what could this possibly mean for the body of an IBD sufferer? Could it be possible that a previous physical or psychological trauma has either caused the right cortical hemisphere to go into overdrive or the left hemisphere has been damaged or lesioned and no longer has the capabilities of balancing the brain's chemical activities. So both the stress hormones adrenaline and cortisol are both linked with an upregulation of the HPA axis which is linked to the right hemispheric dominance 
And this is really fascinating because both of these hormones have the properties where they vasodilate, which means they open up the blood vessels of our skeletal muscles, but they vasoconstrict, which means they tighten the blood vessels around our abdominal organs. So you would think that potentially this chronic constriction and seemingly random constriction of abdominal muscles might contribute to some of the severe cramps IBD sufferers experience on a regular basis. And also another thing this could potentially lead to is old blood not being recycled efficiently. And you may be aware of cells in our digestive tract continuously recycling themselves over a period of time. But what happens if there's excess vasoconstriction in the digestive tract and new blood isn't being delivered there? What might happen to those old cells along the lining of the GI tract? Well, they might end up contributing to the bloody diarrhea that many of us are very familiar with. So here's some speculation on my behalf, and this isn't backed up by any research or anything, guys. This is just a process that I could imagine occurring in my mind when it comes to IBD. And I want you to think about the process of rusting a combination of elements creates a reaction. So that's iron, oxygen, and H2O or water. Now, if IBD sufferers have decreased levels of free radical scavenging enzymes, then the process of oxidation could speed up within their digestive tract. This combined with a lack of recycled blood due to abdominal vasoconstriction could potentially lead to damaged cells along the intestinal lining. Now, is it possible with these factors in place, so decreased free radical scavenging enzymes, increased oxidation as a result, and also lack of fresh and renewed blood to the digestive tract, is it possible that there could almost be a rusting type effect going on within our digestive lining, within the digestive tract, and it's been triggered by this chemical imbalance, this hormonal imbalance in the brain, following some sort of trauma, whether that be psychologically, chemically, physically, something has offset this response. And over time, what's ended up happening is because these things aren't present in the digestive system, it's a progressive decline until we start experiencing the cramps and that bloody diarrhea. But what I really wanna know from you guys is, is there some sort of functional weakness between the left side of your brain and the right side of your brain? I'd be really interested for you to go over now and check out the video that I've linked to this video, which is how to test yourself for a functional neurologic disorder. And let me know down below in the comments of that video, whether or not you have a weakness on one side of your brain and how it's performing functionally. So now here are just some thoughts to consider when it comes to today's video. So could elevated cortisol and adrenaline levels be in response to a mental or physical stress that's already occurred or due to an ongoing reaction that's occurring in the body, i.e. brain chemistry imbalances. But I would argue either way, whether it's a trauma that's initiated this sort of response, or a trauma's initiated it, and it's an ongoing process. Either way, I think we could have some sort of impact over it by doing certain brain-based rehab to try to balance out the two sides of our neuroaxis to fuel the brain and to try to encourage rehabilitation to balance out chemical levels and then hopefully that should affect us further on down with things for example like our digestive tract. Another point to consider and this links into what I said earlier on in the video is could activating a certain side of the brain increase free radical scavenging enzymes and thus slow down the process of oxidation. Again this is another really interesting point because it could imply that simply by taking up some certain functional neurologic rehab and brain-based activities to target those areas of weakness, we could balance our chemical levels in the brain and that could have hormonal implications further on down in the body. And that could actually have a positive impact on IBD itself. And then another observation I've made is that people have developed IBD from numerous different avenues. So because of this, we might have to consider the effects of the situations that have occurred in their lives rather than situations themselves. And you guys can see on the screen now this table of how I've asked people how they believe their IBD came about in the first place. And you can see through so many different ways people believe their first onset of symptoms arose. And so it's really important to consider what these situations may have actually done to the body rather than the negative situations themselves. 
And finally, I invite you guys to have your say down below in the comment section about today's video. Do you think anything of what I've said today has any sort of validity for IBD sufferers? Do you think it could potentially be a brain-based chemical imbalance that might be causing problems further on down in the digestive tract? Or do you believe it's something else going on in the gut that we need to address primarily? Let me know in a comment down below because I do read every single one and I try my best to get back to every single one of you and I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this topic.